All right, so good afternoon. This afternoon, we want to talk to you a little bit about sexual assault prevention and response. Um, before we get started, what do you know about sexual assault? So if I say sexual assault, what do you think? What automatically comes to mind? First thought, rape, okay? Rape. Anyone else? Okay, so rape. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that. What about reporting options? Do, do, do anyone, or can anyone tell me what the two reporting options are for sexual assault? Uh, yeah, you know how this advocate back there. That's okay. That's all right. I always ask those questions, um, one, so that I can know what you know, and then just to see. So those are some of the things we're going to talk about today. So if you look at, so we have uh, slides for the folks that are visual learners. We also gave you all some um, handouts that we're going to talk a little bit about. Um, please, if you have any questions regarding sexual assault prevention and response, ask, okay? Um, and we also have our business card so that we can hand out um, so you have our contact information. So the uh, SAPR program is a two-pronged approach. We focus on both prevention and response. We're really, really good at response. Um, we respond 24-7, 365. Um, we all have duty cell phones. We have work cell phones. You can contact us anytime. Um, we are a victim-oriented program, which means we focus solely on the victim. So if there's a sexual assault case, you know, there's always an alleged offender. You have a victim. You have the command. You have all those fo key players. We focus solely on the victim. We are a voluntary program. Um, a lot of times what happens is co uh, commanders or COs want us to be involved. Well, if the victim does not want services, we cannot provide services, okay? Um, and then, so who are we? So we, um, for Navy Support Activity Washington, we have currently two SARCs, myself, Toledo Jackson, and then we have Monique Green. I'm, I'm the lead SARC for Navy Support Activity Washington. I sit over at the Washington Navy Yard. And then we have Monique Green, who um, she's, uh, she kind of splits her time between here at JBAC, she's the lead here, and then over, she helps me out over there. And then we're um, getting a third SARC um, soon. And then we have um, one civilian victim advocate full time, and then we have over 100 uniform victim advocates that represent the commands, okay? Um, you all have this. Um, we just created this. If you noticed, it has our picture so people can see our faces, who we are. Um, we try to get out as much as we can to the fence lines, and we're going to show you that next. Um, it has the reporting options. And if you notice, right here in the middle, in big, that blue section, is that that's the number we want people to call. That's our 24-7 um, helpline. Um, and then at the bottom, we have the DOD Safe Helpline. Um, that's also a great resource. There's also an app um, for the DOD Safe Helpline. Um, that helps a victim with safety planning. Um, they may not be. They may not want to talk to someone face to face. They may not want to call someone. They can text, um, be in a chat room, those types of things. So great resource. Also some like relaxation kind of stuff. So uh, we use it for our advocates as well. You know, if you got a couple minutes, you're stressed out, you're in your office, you can utilize that app. Okay. Um, next slide. This is our coverage area. You know, um, a lot of um, People think that we are only at the Navy Yard or only at JBAB. That's not true. Um, that's our fence, um, our fence line for NSAW. Uh, we cover down all of Washington, D.C., Prince George's County, Northern Virginia, all the way up, and then Cotterra. Okay? So um, it's kind of hard to see up there. But anything that's blue, I would be the lead start for. And then the orange would be uh, Monique Green. All right? And that's going to change a little bit when we get to third start as well. All right? Okay, no worries. Um, have you ever heard the term mandated reporter? Mm -hmm. So as ombudsman, do you mm -hmm. know that you are mandated reporters? So for those that know what that means, can you explain what that looks like? What does that mean? Yes. Nobody. It means that if someone reports to you a sexual assault, you have to report it. Okay, you cannot take a restricted report. So we have two reporting options. We have restricted and unrestricted. With the unrestricted reporting option, what happens is a victim presents. Um, if they tell someone in the chain of command, if they tell um, anyone outside of the SARC, a victim advocate, it could be uniformed or civilian, 
a health care provider or a chaplain, um, then the, the report will automatically be unrestricted. And what, pretty much what that means, they get all the same services except for law enforcement will be notified. The command will be notified. With a restricted report, there's no investigation. The victim is able to get these exact same services um, but there will be no investigation. And so what we do with the restricted report is we utilize that to empower victims to seek help, but then also eventually they may be able to come forward and, and do an unrestricted report, but it's all up to them. Um, once they go unrestricted though, they, can no long, they can't go backwards and do a restricted report, okay? So sometimes we may get someone in, they may be unsure, they want to make the report, they want to get help, they don't want law enforcement involved, they really don't want the command involved, so they choose the um, restricted reporting option, okay? Yes, ma'am. But if someone contacts us, I yes. get a phone call tonight, Yep. that would be unrestricted. That would yes. be unrestricted. Yes, ma'am. And so I'm glad you brought that up. Um, in your packet, we gave you um, the NAV admin 06514, and it specifically states that you are a mandated reporter. So if you hear something, you should contact law enforcement, your CO, um, and make a notification. That's not something that you would keep. So if someone says to me, if they, you know, hi, Chris, this is, you know, whomever. Yes. Uh, I would like to make a restricted sexual assault report. They've already unrestricted themselves, correct? So. <laughs> because if they're saying they want it to be restricted, but they've already called me, and they've said it in that first sentence. So that can be tricky, because yeah. I'm not going to say that. Would they say restricted or confidential, yes. would it kind of be the same thing to them? Mm -hmm. A confidential report. Mm -hmm. they, they could. Sometimes people don't know the language. We're trying to get out to right. make people mm -hmm. aware of the language. Right. So they may say a confidential report. What I like to tell people is this. If someone comes to you and it seems like it's a crisis type situation, we all stop them. Stop them. And so that we can try to preserve that restricted report because you're absolutely right. If they tell you this is what happened to me, it's, it's automatically unrestricted. Because, because guess what? Who, who are you to the command? Uh, advocate. Mm -hmm. You're an official represent, a re representative. So you are required to make that report. Okay? So if I come to you and I say, I need some help. I don't know where to go. Mm -hmm. um, what would you say to me? I need some help. I don't know where to go. What would your next question be? I would ask, well, I guess if I'm still piggybacking on my first question, mm -hmm. if they haven't said anything yet, then I would grab my book <laughs> so for me, my, my and, next and tell them uh, to go to their SARP. Okay, so we don't know what the issue is yet, right? We don't know if they need, what kind of help. They might need mental help. They might need um, uh, Oh, you were just talking about that. Right, so just yeah. broad. Right, just broadly. Right, so yes. if they just come and say, my next question is what kind of help? Because depending on the kind of help they need is, is how we decide to reach out. So yes. if, if they come out and they automatically say, I've been sexually assaulted, that's an a, a unrestricted report if they report that to you. Absolutely. See, and I, so and it's I, tricky how they how they say it and what they say. So what I'm saying is, if they come to you, they're saying they need help. They're kind, it's kind of vague. You're not really sure what they need. I would I, I wouldn't ask questions about it. Because even for us as SARCs and as victim advocates, we don't ask a lot of questions with regard to what happened, because no. we we have no need to know. You know what I mean? Our job is yes. to assist. We mm -hmm. connect dots. We make pe we, we do initial crisis intervention, and then we do warm hands off to medical support, to um, mental health, to whatever support they, they may need. So NCIS, if, if it's an unrestricted report and they need support going to NCIS, we're there. We're going to make sure they're taken care of. Um, as a SARC, we do a lot of what we do case management. We follow that case from the beginning to the end just to make sure that they're taken care of. Um, Captain Drager is our um, ICO for NSAW. Um, it's our SACMAG, our Sexual Assault Case Management Group, he does a great job of bring, we bring the COs in and we bring all the stakeholders. So we bring the mental health professional, we bring NCIS, we bring legal, everyone that's involved in that case. We bring the actual victim advocate and uh, who serves as the voice of the victim into that SACMAG as well as the CO and we get updates. 
the bottom line to that meeting is we're, we're not trying to solve, you know, the mystery of what happened, how it happened, any of those things. Our primary responsibility is to make sure that there's no retaliation, that there's no safety concerns, that we're really taking care of that person. Our job as advocates and as a SARC is not to determine whether the victim is telling the truth or not. When those folks present to us, we believe whatever it is that they need. We, we're, we're there for support only. Okay. So if I put, try to place myself, I'm sorry. I was going to try to offer to help. You're asking a really good question. Yeah, because if I try to place myself, and thank goodness I've never been there, yeah. but if I try to place myself in the shoes of a victim who is just experienced this and been very, very upset, and the one person I call is my ombudsman because my ombudsman is bound by confidentiality. Then to me, and perhaps this is that I don't completely understand it, to me that's a little loophole because if I'm calling somebody who's confidential, then, then why is it unrestricted? Why don't we, I mean, if, if I say, if that person says to me, at, right after hello makes that sentence and I've been assaulted, then it becomes unrestricted. I would, and if my next comment to them is stop, don't tell me anymore, why wouldn't we have that ability to do that and then direct them to call their SARP or the CO to keep it restricted? Do you, you know, I'm sure you understand what I'm saying. Part of being the ombudsman is letting your people know Edgy. what you can and cannot do. And yes, you have confidentiality in certain <coughs> aspects of the job. But what is really important is when you educate your families is what you cannot do. You mm. cannot, think you, certain things, anyone else, child abuse, domestic abuse, sexual assault, those sort of things, nobody can hold them in unless they're a chaplain. So that's something you educate the people ahead of time. So yes, you're confidential. You're not going to blab to everyone about their financial issues and things like that. But certain aspects are absolutely mandated. And so part of your job as the ombudsman is to educate your command and the families about that. So that when you're when someone says, oh, I'm having a really bad day, I need to talk to you. OK, wait a minute. Let me remind you. Certain things I cannot, I cannot keep in confidence. And these are X, Y, and Z. If any of these. Mm -hmm. Tell me which one. I will do. I will tell you. If it's sexual assault, call this number. If it's domestic violence, call this number. If it's it, call this number. And if they say, "Okay, great, thank you, man," boom, you're done. You don't have to report anything because they didn't tell you anything. Right. Okay. If they then say, "Well, no, I can't pay my bills," blah blah. Okay, then you're going to blow the ball. Okay. Right. Right. Okay. So it's really all about educating your families as to what you can and cannot do. If you do a newsletter or you're talking a lot, reiterate that every single time because you're right. When they're in crisis. Mm -hmm. But hopefully you get that sense on the phone or person that they're agitated, you need to say, okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. Mm -hmm. I'm here to help, but let me make sure I can really help you and, and, and tell them what, are, what the restrictions are. Okay, thank you. Thank you. She's really covered a lot of some ethical things. Mm -hmm. One, and, and part of that is because you have an obligation to the CEO. That's right. Who's right. designated to uh, in those certain areas where uh, mandated reporting is required. Um, she talked about educating them up front, so that's a very advanced strategic way to help them make informed decisions. And then if they do call you in a panic and you sense it's a panic in situation, mm -hmm. as Salita said with the stop. stop, you have the opportunity <laughs> to interject and say, if it's this kind of thing, if it's financial, yep. if it's sexual mm -hmm. assault, mm -hmm. if it's domestic violence, you have the opportunity to do it's, it's a pretty small window right. to interject one last time and try to help them make an informed decision. That's a great question. Let's say you, you do tell them that you have your mind that it's confidential. I mean, and if they tell you anything that you, you, know, you may report, what if they choose not to tell, share anything with you, do nothing about it, and then there's repercussions to the doctors or injured or something happens? That, what responsibilities does anybody have to? So you're saying you knew, but you didn't make the report? No, let's say they, they, they called me and said, I want to make the report. And you stop them and you say, yeah. you know, if you tell me something that's confidential, um, mm -hmm. depending on what the case is, I have to report it. And then they say, OK, and we change it. And then they stop and they change what I'm going to share with you, what they're going to share with you. And it winds up being a very situation where somebody forgot that they wanted to be incurred. 
or anything like that. So, you know what I'm saying? When they change their mind, because sometimes they, they and it, and want to share with you and they have confidence, and then when yeah. they feel like it's going to be shared, then they change their mind. Something could happen. So, how do you handle the aftermath of that? Of, um, it, where's the crime line? Does that make sense what I'm yes. So um, we we deal with that sometimes because remember we're a, a voluntary program. Right. Um, so for example, if a sexual assault occurs and, and we're notified, yes, we offer services. But if the you know if at any time they say no, or if if someone notifies us and says, hey, I know this person is going through this. They've been sexually assaulted. Um, a lot of times we still won't necessarily make direct contact. It just depends because it's all about the comfort level of them. Yeah. So what we can do is once we figure it out and if they if we can offer them services, then we mitigate from there. You know, try to get in and, and treat, uh, you know, get them some medical care and all those things. Um, it's it's kind of all in hindsight. It, 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 I understand the frustration with it. Um, we have separate point of contacts. They work with us. Um, they're our admin piece at the commands. They cannot take a restricted report either. And they, do, they help us with our training. So people see them sometimes as that face of sexual assault. And we tell them the exact same thing. Listen, you work for the command. Um, and we have victim advocates for that, which is another reason why we, as SARCs and um, victim advocates, try to get into those commands as much as we can, get the posters up, let people know who we are, what we can offer them, and make them, you know, get folks comfortable with us. Um, yes. Sorry, I know I'm